Who is What's the, the problem? problem? I don't know. Well, well, baby, I'm, I'm in love. You're ruining this. Come on, come on. You sound like Eric Cartman. I've been a faster. There's a line in that song about strawberries. And cre- I don't know. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back once again to the one and a half white guys podcast or more solicited white guy opinions on movies for long. I'm Nathan, your half white guy. And I'm Nick, your one white guy. And we're both like ogres. Ogres have layers. Podcasts have no layers. <laughs> this is, it's surface level bullshit anyway. And we both stink and make you cry. There you go. It is the 20th anniversary of a little movie called Shrek 2. <laughs> <laughs> this movie's anything but little, though, man. I, I know. This is actually one of the biggest movies, uh, biggest animated movies, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But so it actually just went back in theaters last weekend. This is in April. I don't know when this is coming out, but man, nostalgia is just heavy nowadays, isn't it? Oh, Jesus. And they're going to do a Shrek 5, too, aren't they? Is there not already a Shrek 5? No, there's four Shreks, two Puss in Boots movies. Okay. And Puss in Boots, the what last about the, wish, what was about the, so good that they greenlit a Shrek 5. No, 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 not Star Wars. You know how like, Star Wars did their holiday special? What about like the Shrek holiday specials? Do I those think, count? Oh, there, is there a Christmas one? I know I there's think like there's a Halloween like, one. I think there's like a Shrek and Donkey Deck the Halls movie or something <laughs> is like there? that. There's, I know there's a Penguins of Madagascar one. Okay. That one was, that's a classic. I try to watch that one every year. It's the one where they, uh, they have to go save the private from the old lady. Oh, really? Because he tries to go get the polar bear a Christmas gift and he gets kidnapped <laughs> instead. It's really funny. It was I'm, on the DVD of uh, Madag- the first Madagascar. I'm going to give this to my grandson. Oh no. She tries to feed him to her dog. <gasps> it's great. <laughs> What a Merry Christmas. I have to show you this now. Oh my God. I have not seen, not seen that. I did the voice like Charlie's grandmother from Charlie dies and doesn't come oh, back. Oh, Charlie, my beautiful grandson. <laughs> Lord. Now we're just talking about smiling friends. Anyway. <laughs> but here's one more. One more I have for you. Okay. You've seen Shrek 4D, right? Uh, I don't think so. No, you never get a chance to see it. Is that the one that's like a ride? It was the ride at Universal for years. I have seen that one then. They don't have it anymore. Oh, really? It's, gone. it's just a DreamWorks uh, theater now. And oh. the last thing I saw there was like a Kung Fu Panda one. Mm. If Wait. anyone knows where to find it, like online, please, by all means. Nick wants to. Nick is going to put himself in a little 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 office chair put it on and just pretend that he's back in the in the ride when he finds it online oh jesus i one more tangent i'm sorry here's the nonsense but okay. I, my parents ness and i went and saw the newest mission impossible in yeah. 4dx theaters yes never again i told here's you don't thing. go see movies in the 4d theaters did you? Yeah. Remember when I told you that I was like a mat when when they when they were talking about when Top Gun was coming out, they had like the trailer and it's like <laughs> I don't I don't want to feel like I'm dodging missiles. I don't I want I'll watch somebody do it, but I don't want to feel like I personally am flying through the air. <laughs> I'm trying to get fucked up to Tom Cruise flying in well, I was hoping shirtless beach volleyball but then they had a girl in it so i was mad about that they had two girls there too Boo! <laughs> not homoerotic not enough. homoerotic enough okay now enough enough tangents all right we are doing <laughs> shrek 2 released in 2004 directed there's three directors uh i mean it's an animated movie so that makes more sense directed by andrew adamson conrad vernon and kelly asbury starring the love guru as shrek <laughs> I forgot that movie existed, didn't Starring you? Starring the career-ending love guru. <laughs> Mike Myers would go on. You to- had every opportunity to name several of his better movies. <laughs> I know, and I chose the love guru. Axel Foley as Donkey. Yeah. yeah. yeah Axel Foley. Is there going to be a new one, right? New Beverly Hills Cop? On Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Natalie Cook as Princess Fiona. Go white girl. Go white girl. Go white girl. <laughs> From Charlie's Angels. <laughs> it's that one. And then I was also thinking of naming something. She's in some. She's something about Mary, right? That's her. Oh, yeah. yeah she's yeah, Mary. That's, that's her. Hey, uh, Crystal loves the holiday, right? Yeah. What's that part at the beginning where, okay, I slept with her and she just checks the guy. <laughs> <laughs> in the face. <laughs> yeah. And finally, Papa Cortez as Puss in Boots. That's oh, yeah. right. That's Antonio Banderas, who is the dad in the Spy Kids movies. I can never remember... His first, his character's first name. Oh, no, I just, call, I just call him Daddy Cortez. <laughs> El Mariachi. <laughs> nobody move, nobody move. I must touch the brain. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember that from part three where he's like all 
freaking out. Oh, Antonio Banderas. Such a such a good time. And that Steve Buscemi just introducing him in every movie. Oh, then yeah. In walked the biggest Mexican I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's what I want to hype you up from now on. But honestly, we could talk about any number of uh, actors and actresses cast for the voice in this movie. Larry King's in this movie. Uh, John Cleese is in this movie. Jennifer Saunders is she she fairy the, godmother. Yep. No, isn't she the voice of Coraline's mom? She is. Yeah. Yeah. So, so no, no, no. She's not. She's not the voice of Coraline's mom. I believe she's the voice of one of the old women that live in the bottom of the Pink Palace. So Jennifer Saunders in this movie, oh. who voices uh, fairy godmother, was in Coraline, which was I think two thousand eight, two thousand nine. She's one of the voices of one of the old lady actresses with all the. I think the terrier heads mounted on the wall. Remember that for all their it's dead dogs? While. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. And she's like, she's the one that is one of the old actresses, I think. Rupert Everett is Prince Charming. Exactly. Also. I yeah. mean, so many of these people we know from other movies that we also grew up with. Like you said, you know, Mike Myers has been in, we know him from Austin Powers. Austin Powers. Wayne's World, Eddie Murphy. I was also going to say Rupert Everett. He's, uh, he's Dr. Claw. Inspector Gadget. Oh, he is. Isn't yeah. He? yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was also. I liked you better when you were fat. <laughs> I think I was also. I think I was also reading that he, Rupert Everett, at one point auditioned for Gaston in oh, the original. Nice. Sin, uh, Did you? Were you about to say Sid and Nancy? Sid and Nancy. <laughs> Cinderella. Be- Sid, uh, Beauty, uh, Beauty and, and the, the Beast. Beast. Yeah, yeah. I believe that that's correct. I'll have to double check on that. But I believe he auditioned for Gaston and he didn't get the part. But this was his chance to. Kind of be more Gaston than Gaston. You know, if he was in Cinderella, he'd be one of the mice, right? Yeah, probably. Nick, would you like to lead us in with the IMDb summary for Shrek 2? Yes, yes, I would. Shrek and Fiona travel to the kingdom of far, far away, where Fiona's parents are king and queen to celebrate their marriage. When they arrive, they find they are not as welcome as they thought they would be. This is the best remake of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. I was going to say that. One of the lines, <laughs> one of the reviews I saw for this movie when it first came out, I forget who said it was like, this is like Shrek meets Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. <laughs> if you haven't seen the original Sydney C- Poitier, uh, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, follows the basic plot of, oh my God, he's black. That's the whole, <laughs> that's the whole plot. But it, for this, it's, it's, oh my God, he's green. No, it's, <laughs> oh my God. They're both green. They're both green. <laughs> did you see this in theaters? I did get to see this in theaters. I got to see Shrek 1 as well, obviously. If you grew up in the 2000s, you know, going, you know, we were a kid growing up in the 2000s, you probably saw Shrek 1 and 2 in, in theaters. <laughs> you saw at least one of the Shreks in theaters, and it resonated with you because it was a fun movie that had just a bunch of pop culture references and two really solid soundtracks. Both, Very, both yeah. movies, both this movie as well. And we'll get to that in a second. But I remember got, getting to see this. I, got, I think I got to see it with my dad. And then I could always tell when maybe a joke I wasn't understanding was more written for adults. Because my dad would be like, quickly <laughs> back at the screen. <laughs> be like, Did he see that? Did he understand that? No, 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 he didn't. OK, what about you? What's that one in Shrek 3 where he just pulls the blanket off him? He's like, ah, you really need to you really need to sleep with pants on. <laughs> just yeah. like, he's looking at his junk right now. Yeah. I did not see Shrek 1 in theaters. You didn't? Okay. The only one I ever saw in theaters. That was 2002. Say So two years prior, right? 2001. 2001, I apologize. The only one I ever, the only Shrek I saw in theaters out of all four was this one, was two. Mm. I saw it with my parents, and for a while it was my favorite movie. I had it on DVD and I watched it a lot. So I know this one pretty well, thankfully. Nice. But I know. And we'll get into the whole cult of personality surrounding Shrek. And now before we uh, get into the movie, I, I did want to shout out to my Aunt Barbara. I saw Shrek 1 because of my Uncle Tommy and Aunt Barbara. My Uncle Tommy is uh, sadly no longer with us, but uh, I'll always forever remember him for many things, one of which being I got to watch Shrek with them. And I never did get to watch any of the sequels with them, but here's hoping I can see Aunt Barbara soon. But um, that's how I got introduced to Shrek. Nice. was through them. So shout out to Aunt B. Aunt B and Uncle T. R.I.P. I don't think I still have the DVD anymore, Damn. unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. I remember, if I did, I would have watched it for this. <laughs> did you play the 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 American Idol thing on the game? Oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> All right. So. I also had the game on PS2. Oh, really? Yeah. Did okay. You, I, I didn't have it on PS2. I had it on Game Boy Advance. Nice. Game, nice. Shrek 2 on Game Boy Advance, which was, you know, it was more of a side scroller. Mm-hmm. It was like Mario at the time. So I, I th- saw some of the clips of, you know, on PS2 and it's like more of a 3D uh, fighting game. You slash mm-hmm. like as, as Shrek, the, the, the human, he has a sword. 
and stuff. But yeah, in my game, like he was a side scroller. You got to play as I think Shrek, Donkey, and I think you get to play as Puss in Boots too. You get to play as Fiona too in the PS2 one. Oh, you might have been able to play as Fiona. I forget. In I was always Donkey. I liked being Donkey <laughs> because Donkey could like make trees fall over by just like he Kicking. had like a burrow blast or something. You know, my burrow blast. <laughs> Is what he said. I, I think they might have gotten all the voice actors back. I don't know if they did, actually. I was looking at that. I think it's different. Oh, is it? I think it's different people. This guy This guy was just really good at pretending to be Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we get into some of the basic plot? It's fun you say that both of these movies have great soundtracks. I, I personally like the first one soundtrack a little more. Okay. But this one opens with a banger. Oh, it does. It yeah. does. Well, well first... <laughs> First, first we get a first we get a villain introduction because Prince Charming shows up to you know kiss Fiona, break the spell. Well, I was reading a book at first. <laughs> anyway, it opens with the it opens with the book of the film. <laughs> <laughs> Scene twenty one. Scene twenty one. <laughs> well, we're learning about how this Prince Charming was supposed to rescue this princess from this castle, and you very much realize, oh, he's talking about Fiona. From the first movie, the first Shrek movie, which don't worry, we will get on to on this podcast eventually, I'm sure. We'll do Shrek. We'll, we'll do, do Shrek, Shrek eventually. But if you remember in the first Shrek, uh, Shrek saved Fiona from that tower, so she's no longer there. So again, we cut to Prince Charming riding his horse through the, the Arctic, the desert, some kind of, uh, I don't know. Wasteland. Where, wherever Scooby-Doo and his friends were investigating at one point. Oh, yeah. He's, just, places. he's driving through Coolsville. Yeah, essentially, yeah. Uh, he gets to the castle and he gets to the tallest tower where Fiona's supposed to be. And uh, who does he find? Oh, well, apparently Fiona rents the tower out to the big bad wolf. <laughs> He's just chilling there. He finally has a place to sleep. Yeah. Which what? is one of the funniest parts of the first movie. Yeah. It's like, he's, he finds him in his bed. What? <laughs> <laughs> so he says, where's Princess Fiona? You're not Fiona. He's like, no, I'm not. Where is she? She's on her honeymoon. And with, then Counting Crows starts playing. With who? And it cuts to Fiona, who's now an ogre, as you remember from the first movie. Or you don't. Spoilers for Shrek 1, I guess. <laughs> um, the Big Bad Wolf, obviously, is a reference to Little Red Riding Hood. We have all these fairy tale creatures still here. It's, but, a, whole, it's a whole world of fairy tale uh, characters but, that inhabit it. And they're all basically just like us. It's just like a big pop culture. All, everything has pop culture references. It's like... I don't know. It's like America, but just you know, all fairy tale yeah. settings and fairy tale characters. Because far, far away is just all the affluent areas of LA. Yeah, is what it is. Yeah, essentially. Just as, but it's but as a fairy tale kingdom. You yes. Know? <laughs> so great world building. Great world in, in building. These first two movies. We have a Counting Crows song called "Accidentally in Love." Uh, I forget if they wrote it or they just covered it for this one. Mm. Most of these songs are covers, but they're really good covers of the original songs. Are they good because they're covers or are they good because of this movie? I actually. So that's an interesting thing because because a lot of people saw this movie and then loved the songs, obviously, from it. Did that get them to seek out the original and think the original is better or do they just love this because of the movie? So, Nick, I actually have a, a point to that. You say, you know, is it good or is it good because people liked it? But one of the covers is a cover of David Bowie's song Changes. I don't know if you remember that one. So that's not the original. It's not song. the original one. But I, I do want to say something. It was a cover going to be done by, I think, what's the name? Butterfly Bocher, Bocher, something like that. Mm. So the true story, David Bowie was still alive at the time. He actually heard the cover and said, this is good enough where I'll provide the backing vocals. No way. So he liked it. So that's him actually singing the backing vocals to Butterfly Bush Air's like lead singer in there. Even oh, though it's his song. Awesome. So I would say these are good songs. They they definitely have some some talent behind them, even if they are covers. That's a very David Bowie thing to do. Too. Yes. Yeah. But this song, uh, but accidentally in love, I like has a bit of a deeper meaning instead of just a love song because yeah. it's it really is the story of Shrek and Fiona, how these two were never really meant to be, but then just it just kind of happened. Yeah. And that's what accidentally in love technically means. But it does that very well, too, you know, because they couldn't be happier together. I agree. And uh, they get home and they decide, all right, we're back from the honeymoon. We're back from the honeymoon. We're at the swamp and donkeys here. <laughs> Don donkeys. The Eddie Murphy himself is hanging out with uh, Shrek and Fiona as donkey. He's third wheeling pretty hard. Yeah. But unfortunately, some messengers come by and reveal, hey, now that we know our daughter has been rescued from the castle, from the tower, which and we locked her in. So this curse could be lifted and married. 
Oops. And married. And married. Hey, we'd love for her to come home. It's and, time to meet uh, the in-laws. He's got to meet the parents now. Yeah. I, I imagine Shrek at the time was like, I swore to God she was like an orphan. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is. But no, Fiona's parents are like, come visit us. And Fiona's like, yeah, let's go. And Shrek's like, wait, what? We're, we're going to go. We're going to go there. And Donkey comes along for the ride, of course. Shrek obviously doesn't want to go, but they set out immediately for the kingdom of far, far away, far, far away. That's where Fiona's from. Beverly Hills, essentially, but not a long time ago. Is that in, another kingdom? No. Well, in, well, so so I would imagine <laughs> if we're breaking it down because there's a long time ago. There's a long time ago. That's got to be another land. place in a land far, 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 far away, far, far away. And then there's a, some weird segment, which uh, I don't want to talk about anymore, called a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> that's a different area. And those guys are weird. What about that shadowy place over there? Oh, we, we, don't, we, we don't talk about that. No, we don't go there. What's over there? You also don't want to know. <laughs> Fuck you? Star Wars. No, we cut, you're going to have to cut that. Are you an angel? <laughs> Are you an elephant? <laughs> What's that from again? Robot chicken. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, far, the kingdom of far, far away is a hoot because there's just a Starbucks on every corner. Actually, is it called Starbucks? So, no, I think it's Farbucks. <laughs> so, I actually, so... Again, this is like upper class L.A. suburb area, and there's a bunch of just riffs on chain stores once they get there. It takes them a while. I, we, I made a note of a couple <laughs> different uh, chain stores that are there for you to see. There's a Burger Prince, which is obviously oh, I'll have the medieval meal, which is Burger King. Yeah, <laughs> there's Old Navery. Nice. <laughs> old, old, old is spelled O-L-D-E. Old Navery for Nave. Old Navy. Old Navy. There's the far, far away sign on the hill, which is uh, it's the Hollywood Hollywood sign. sign. Yeah. This was good. This one's a good one. Uh, Versachart for Versachery. 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 Okay. For Versace. <laughs> that's a, that's yeah. a stretch. Versachery. You know what you're reminding me of? Have you ever seen Shark Tale? Yes. You remember how they had plays on like actors' names in that movie too? Yeah. Like Gap was Gup. Yeah. And um, Russell Crowe, Muscle Crowe. Muscle Crowe, yeah. Um, Jessica Shrimpson. <laughs> And then Cod Stewart, and yeah, all that, and then Seal. It's just Seal, and it's a literal Seal. Just like, ur, ur. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Another DreamWorks movie. Another DreamWorks. <laughs> the last one that did make me laugh, besides Farbucks, obviously, is Ab Abercrombie and Witch, which I thought. Oh, was, that's perfect. That's perfect. Abercrombie a and Fitch already did that. Actually, they did that. Like, I remember seeing an Abercrombie and Fitch ad in a magazine when I was little, but it was like the October issue of that oh. magazine. So it was Aberzombie and Witch. Aberzombie and Witch. And I was just like, for a few years, I just thought that's what they were called. <laughs> I just thought that, that it was funny. Some of these, you know, these references they made. To touch on Donkey really quick, because mm -hmm. we have to, Eddie Murphy comes back and he shines his Donkey. He just like his career was very much uh, resurrected because of Donkey, I think. Um, yeah, well, he kind of, you know, Eddie Murphy had done a lot of these adult, you know, humor movies. Beverly Hills Cop coming to America, so but, trading places. But now, but after Mulan and then Shrek, he they realized like you are perfect for kids movies. You have an iconic voice for kids movies, and he was pivoting. He was doing that. Didn't he do Doctor Doolittle as well? He was doing Doctor Doolittle. He did Daddy Daycare. Yeah, Haunted Mansion. The Haunted Mansion. Eventually, which will eventually release. We did that one. <laughs> There's another one that's there. So he had started to pivot more into more kids movies. I mean, so is Mike Myers now as, yeah. as that. And uh, at the same time, Ice Cube's doing the uh, doing the uh, are we done yet? Are we done yet? All oh, yeah. those. He's doing all those movies. So <laughs> Wait, I just showed uh, Vanessa Friday the yeah, other day. The original Friday. Yeah, she thought and she she couldn't get enough of Chris Tucker. She was just like, this guy is like, she was blown away by him in the movie. And she was just like, this guy is so over the top. It's insane. I was like, he's the, this movie would not be as popular without him. No, it like, is. I'm sorry. He like, he's, I argue he he's plays this, everybody's favorite character. I argue he plays the same character in the fifth element, just in space. <laughs> Do, you <laughs> see that talk show. Do you see that meme where they superimpose him into Star Trek? It's like, Captain, it's the Borg. We're going to die. <laughs> Oh it. my god. I love it. Oh, we need to watch Fifth Element again now. Yeah. I, I have always loved the dynamic of annoying character and the straight man mm -hmm. um, palling around together, even though they're both so different from each other. Sure. Because they love each other. Yeah. They've been through shit together. They, they grew to love each other and whatnot. And you know these two still have love for each other because they're the dynamic duo yeah. of the movie. Uh, even throughout all four of these, it's Shrek and Donkey. Yeah. 
but you can tell Shrek just still gets really annoyed with him. But it does warm my heart that he always wants him around anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Especially, it's so prevalent in the scene where they're traveling to far, far away. He's like, are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? Yes. Really? No! <laughs> Could sure. you not be yourself? For five minutes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mike, Scottish Mike Myers. Scottish Mike Myers, perfectly cast as Shrek, but R.I.P. Chris Farley, who was originally going to be Shrek. Yeah. Have you seen that test of the... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's incredible. It's an incredible test. It's he would have like, done what? he would have done great. 35 he, to 50 seconds, right? Of how long it is. Not even that long. No, it's like it's a whole ass scene, I, I think. Chris Farley doing the voice and the dialogue is completely oh, different. Oh, that one. No, no, I was talking about that one for it was like just the test footage from like 97 where they were still coming up with the idea Ooh. of Shrek where it's like early computer animation. No, the this fork, one I'm talking about think, is, just think, story, is just storyboards. I don't even think I've seen Chris and Farley. I don't even think Chris Farley did the voice of Shrek in that one. It's like a 50 second clip. It actually just dropped on YouTube like a year ago. It finally got released. Somebody found it. It was like a first test footage for Shrek. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it's him like dancing to a song and some dude tries to rob him. And he's like, no way, not in your life. And he like pulls like the 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 cord that like the guy's hanging on like Mission Impossible and it like bungees him out of the like the area. <laughs> yeah, it was a very interesting one. There's a good Mission Impossible reference in this with Pinocchio too. Do, 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 do. Yes. He gets all tangled in his fucking strings. <laughs> anyway, now they're in far, far away and they get to meet they Princess get, Fiona's parents. They get to meet the king and queen. The King, voiced by John Cleese. John Cleese from the Monty Python sketch comedy troupe. Julie Andrews is the Jane queen. Julie too. Andrews. They got great. They got great actors to be in this. They got a lot of big names, but these actors actually do fantastic voice oh, work yeah. in this movie. Phenomenal. This movie basically exposed a lot of kids to racism or taught them at an early age, like, here's what it could very much look like. Yeah. Because this is, it's very underlying in this. Yes. It's very clear. It's very even, clear. Maybe yeah. even self loathing, too, yeah. because especially with the twist at the end of who the king used to be. Yeah, exactly. And uh, but it's uh, watching it now, it's just like, wow, this kind of goes over your heads as a kid. When you're, when you're an adult now, you're just like, oh no, this is real. Yeah. Like, Either you've been through it, your friends have been through it, or it's happening to you right now. Sure. And that's a good thing that the movie tries to handle in a, in a, at least a responsible way. I feel like it, responsible enough for a kid's movie. Yeah. Kind of way. It's like not too heavy handed. It's, you know what, you know, what it reminds me of you ever watched static shock growing up. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember that scene where like we find out that Richie's dad is just a fucking racist? No, that episode. no, I so don't. They, I never, I don't remember Richie's dad. I remember when Richie got shot. Though. Oh God, that's a, that's a whole nother thing. We both love Static Shock. <laughs> Jesus but, Christ. But in this Static Shock episode, Richie's dad uh, learns that Richie is hanging out with Virgil, who's static and Virgil's black and he has no this, shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has this whole like thing where he goes, because apparently Richie's dad isn't home much because he works all the time and they never hang out at Richie's house anyway. But then Virgil's like, why don't we hang out at your place? And he has this whole rant about, he's like, those people coming into my house. And then the two kids end up, well, Richie's like, fuck this. I hate my dad. He's ruining my friendship with my best friend and runs off. But Virgil's dad, I forget his dad's name. His and, dad. And, Richie, and Richie's dad end up having to work together to try to find their sons. Mm -hmm. And there's this whole talk where Virgil's, you know, Richie's dad is like, you know, I don't necessarily hate, you know, you know, anyone, I just feel, and he has like all these talks and he goes, no, he goes, but I feel like it kind of applies to this where Virgil's dad is like, no, you're just prejudiced by proxy. Yeah. And it's like, you're the bigot that's kind of proud of your ignorance. And it's a, it's a pr kind of a, kind of a similar idea to this, the king, the king and Fiona. Cause yeah, I get it at the end. Yeah. You love your kids and you want to help them. But at the same time, you you know, you make you, all your decisions. You made these decisions, you know, mm -hmm. you put your kids in these types of situations because of how you act. And then you can't just sit there and say, well, I don't really like it's not really on me. No, your decisions did. And they have consequences and wait. I like those. It's similar ideas. Watch Static Shock, by the way. Static Shock's amazing. It's one of my favorite animated superhero shows. There's one uh, there's one old show we watched that we have in common. What? I loved it when Static Shock. Oh, yeah. On. Yeah. Dude, so cool. He rides on like a like a metal circle. <laughs> he rides on that thing Shaggy and Scooby ride down the hill and Scooby Doo, too. Yeah. <laughs> He rides on like all a of his villains. Circle. All of his villains are just like, like 
Oh, it's with fucking superpowers. <laughs> it's great. My favorite is the dude that's just the void. <laughs> oh, yeah, but he's got, like, the brain. Yeah. You can see, see his brain. And I was like, he's just like, what is he? Is he goo? Is he just, like, another dimension? What is that guy? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. He's... I, we got we to rewatch Static Shock. Make a live-action Static Shock movie. Who would direct a... Who could direct Static Shock? Um, I wonder, I wonder what Spike Lee would do with it. <laughs> that could be interesting. Spike Lee static shot. Yeah, Spike Lee static shot. Cast himself as static shot. Just, just Mookie. Spike, static shot. Spike, you're way too old, man. <laughs> but the king is the one who has the problem with it, especially when you find out that he's been coerced into this plot. Yes. Uh, but also, he's just kind of a control freak who thought everything would go like his way and whatnot. He, sure. He had everything planned out, and which is what, which is another thing a lot of kids would be exposed to in this movie is, you know, parents who want one thing, want one thing for their kids and the kids want something else. And again, like you said, the movie handles that in a really subtle way. Subtle, but subtle and respectful way. I feel like not mm -hmm. doing it too heavy handed because the king has an issue with Shrek and there's all this tension. Because he's green. Because he's green. <laughs> they have an argument uh, at dinner, which is a very funny scene. Yeah, it's a pretty funny. They'll get into a huge argument over you shouldn't be dating my daughter. So after Motherfucker, that, I'm married to your daughter. Yeah, already. That. <laughs> and then so after that, Fiona goes off and, you know, cries and has this. And then Shrek's like, God damn it. I'm fucking this up. And she Fiona goes crying in a room and that calls to fairy godmother. Who's this basically exactly she's real. She's fairy godmother from she's all the comics. Yeah, she's, she's a character yeah, from, all the comics. <laughs> from all the comics, from all the comics, all the lore. Oh, my favorite superhero. <laughs> the fairy godmother. <laughs> Bippity boppity bang. <laughs> Fiona can only achieve princesshood by having one thing. It's very good, brother. <laughs> good. Bravo. <laughs> Bravo to that callback. <laughs> and she goes, hey, what's going on? And it's Jennifer Saunders, right? She's pretty surprised. Yeah, she's pretty surprised that she, she's an ogre. She comes too. up. Yeah, she's like surprised that she's an ogre. She has this whole wonderful song about trying to help Fiona. And Shrek walks in. And Jennifer Saunders, fairy godmother, is like, oh, what the hell? <laughs> what happened? Wait, 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 wait. Why are you two married? And then she hears it and is like, well, here's my card in case you ever might want to think about divorce or whatever. Yeah. And, and Shrek <laughs> takes it and is like, see up and flies off. And her and Sh Fiona and Shrek have an argument over, again, should we leave? Should we go? You know, that Shrek wants out of there. Fiona is like, no, you got to learn. I to mean, who can blame him? Right? Yeah, I know. It's like, well, you got to deal with, you know, you got to learn to live with my parents. We're all going to be together. And she Shrek goes, I'm not going to change. I'm always an ogre. And she goes, I changed for you, which is a good point. There's there's really That's fair. No, there's yeah. no winner in this argument, really. So it's it's but it's just a heated and it kind of feels real, you know, very real, very realistic argument between the two of them. Yeah, when the movie wants to be funny, it succeeds. But when it wants to be serious, again, stuff goes over our heads as a kid. But when we watch it as adults, we realize we've been living through these these situations, these lives. Yes. Like, because that's the beauty of the first Shrek is all of us can see a little all of us can see a little bit of ourselves in this guy. Yeah. This this curmudgeon, this poor yeah. guy. And then life happens, things happen for the better or worse, and eventually we all find ourselves in similar situations. Yeah, Shrek's journey through each of the movies, I feel like, is the is just the same. I feel like it's the same journey, just like with different things. Like, first movie is, yeah, I just want to have be my peace and left alone. Nobody's ever I want gonna, my home back. I'm never, nobody's ever going to love me. I'm not going to love anyone. But then goes to it and he's like, well, you know, maybe I should make adjustments and and learn and you know i can make I can mistakes let, i can let people i can in. let people in second movie is like no we're fine we don't need anyone else i don't need to talk to anyone i don't need to go see your parents at all and it's like well and then it learns like well maybe i can change we can change a little bit for each other but still keep who we are and, and far and fall in love and then by the third movie is kids and he's like he's like he's like i just oh, he's like i just i just don't want to be a dad i don't know i just want my peace i'm not sure i'm really unsure and then you know has all that so his journey is very similar through all three movies i feel like uh it, it's a similar feel of all of it which is maybe why it resonates with people because it's relatable it's mm -hmm. connective it's just like slow growth takes time holistic growth takes time and that's the that's the feel behind it well said such a good such a good series for for that and maybe that's why we can see a bit of ourselves in Shrek, but you know what we can't see? 
uh, unless unless you've had this, uh, your father-in-law hiring an assassin to come kill you <laughs> because that's the next scene. But there's only one place to hire somebody to get rid of the ogre. The poison apple. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the poison apple is this. Oh, God, dude. It opens. It's like, dude, no, it's like the faux ghost from Scooby Doo. It really is the faux ghost. It's, it's where all the villains hang out. Where all the villains <laughs> of all of the fairy tales hang out. And, oh, dude, when they when he gets there, the music is uh, is uh, Tom Waits. No way. That's, to, that's a Tom oh, Waits song. I didn't song. realize. I like my town with a little drop of poison. <laughs> that's Tom Waits. It's perfect. You get to see all of these. Uh, old villains arguing about shit. There's, did you see the one of my favorite scenes as well? There's the headless horseman at the bar when he walks in. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. He's, got, he's just like pouring it into like his. He's empty, pouring his, it into his, his body, into his neck, essentially. <laughs> yeah. One one tangent. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen the Mar the Netflix Punisher series with no. John Bernthal. No. The first episode of that season is him just like trying not to be a murderous son of a bitch. Yeah. And then finally some guys push him over the edge and some guys who deserve it. Yeah. And he starts like going to town on them with a sledgehammer and they start playing Tom Waits. Yeah. It <laughs> it's, great. it's really good needle drop. Oh my God. Great song. It's, <laughs> it's perfect. King goes in there and says, hey, I'd like to... I, w I need someone who can kill an ogre. Yeah. And Larry King <laughs> as the ugly stepsister. That was... Perfect. It's like it's I'm like, looking for the ugly stepsister. Turns around, just, just like, like ugly stepsister, and then she opens her mouth. It's the voice of Larry King, and she's like, "It's like who's the guy? Who's the guy?" <laughs> <laughs> just like this, like New York, Brooklyn type of. Hey, look, man. There's only one guy who can handle that. Yeah, <laughs> and I do have a I do have a fact for Larry King as well. R.I.P. Also, yeah, R.I.P. This was the first time, first time he'd ever done of animated voice besides the Simpsons. He had never done a movie animated or anything besides the Simpsons before this. But the first time he did was to play the ugly stepsister in Shrek two, which is kind of amazing that he was like, <laughs> Oh yeah, I'll do this. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's per it's perfect. He had done the Simpsons, like I said, but I think he'd played himself in one episode and then maybe Obviously, played, so yeah, yeah. played, played some other, it really is. It's He's got so a good voice. Perfect. He yeah. always had a good voice. Very too. iconic. It's very, very easy to hear and listen to. And he hires a pair of glowing eyes in a dark room. And a pair of boots. And a pair of boots. Attached to a pair of boots. A pair of boots. But before he That leaves, also has a sword. Yeah. But before, as he- Where can I find this ogre? Yeah. And then we get our first introduction to Antonio Banderas. As Puss in Boots. As Puss in Boots. He'll make a full appearance later and we'll get to that. But I do want to say, did you know, so Antonio Banderas said that to, to get into character for Puss in Boots, apparently he owns a bunch of cats. Oh, nice. And he would just like spend time like looking and studying his cats <laughs> and taking photos of his cats. And he goes, I need to get into character. I need to be the, cat. the cats. And like he, he was super into it. And I was like, hey, man, I totally respect that. But I just want to let you know that um, single white women do that now anyway. <laughs> How many times, how many photos of your cat? Well, let me ask you this. Like, how many photos of your cat do you have on your phone? Enough. Enough. <laughs> of Mr. Cookie. Do you think Cookie could be Puss in Boots? Cookie. Cookie's Puss in Boots from Shrek 4. There you go. We'll just say that. Not that he's as big as him, but he's not quite as nimble as Puss, oh, that's Shrek Puss in Boots in Shrek 2. Yeah, yeah. I might have let myself go a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Shrek is looking for his happily ever after. And he's hopefully going to find a potion to help. And I feel like that's a good place to leave it. You should watch Shrek 2. Obviously. Even if you've seen Shrek 2, we watch don't want to say anymore. Yeah, watch yeah. it again. It's just such a fun. It's just so fun for kids and adults. It's got a great story, great cast, great heart. Okay. And again, great, great soundtrack. There's even in later, there's a song by Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. Oh, nice. Yeah, <laughs> they, they play and he's like, people ain't no good when they're all back in the Back at the bar, he's like, I hate Mondays. Like drinking, that's Nick Cave of the Bad Seeds playing. Nice. <laughs> There's even a cover of the Buzzcocks, which is an early proto-punk band in there. It's perfect. I think we should go to the facts section. What do you think? I'm down. Cool. Hit me. Okay, again, so this is our new style facts. We tend to do more facts throughout the movie now, so we only have a few facts and a what a story mark. The facts section, again, is real facts about the movie that I've researched and written down. Nick has never seen these before, and he's going to read them live for you. And again, these are real facts. With some other some other stuff included. 
The Shrek 2 fact section starts with fact number one. Shrek 2 was released on May 19th, 2004 to a $108 million domestic opening weekend, which was at that time the biggest opening weekend ever for an animated movie. Mm -hmm. It made a total of $441 million domestically while in theaters, placing it at number five on the all-time animated box office list and number 22 on the all-time box office list. Both inflation adjusted. And domestic. Domestic. Some of its competition in the summer of 2004 included Mean Girls, the one that ha- the one that's not as good because there's no singing. <laughs> Them's fighting words yeah, right yeah. there. Spider-Man 2, starring Willem Dafoe again, but for only like two minutes. Avenge me! <laughs> and Exorcist the Beginning, starring... Oh, some hungry hyenas. <laughs> There's two cuts uh, of that movie. <laughs> I remember Lord. that. <laughs> okay, uh, so big thing here, internationally and worldwide total, 494 million. Good. For a total worldwide of 935 million, 454,000. A little bit less. Hell little bit yeah. Less. A lot, a lot. And still inflation adjusted, a lot. But that's kind of insane. So domestically, 441, worldwide, 494. Yep. That's crazy how much the U.S. saw this movie and loved it. It made... Because Shrek 1 was so popular. It was so popular. And this one had a bigger budget, clearly, for animation mm-hmm. and, you know, voice acting and stuff. This was hyped. This, this was, was very hyped. Very hyped. And it killed. It, it, had, it was the highest, biggest grossing opening weekend for animated at that point to that day. When we were kids growing up, you know, when Shrek 1 came out, it just kind of came. Yeah. But uh, around 2003, 2004, this is when we started, you know, seeing more trailers for stuff. More advertising. This is when we knew things were coming out, even if they were coming out like a long time from now. There was green ketchup for Shrek (laughs) Shrek 2. I remember that. (laughs) There was like green PB, peanut butter and jelly stuff. (laughs) Gogurt like green stuff. There was like the green ketchup. I remember all of it. Yeah. And still, none of us ate our green vegetables. None of us ate the green vegetables. Nope. (laughs) So, Nick, would you like to take a guess at animated movies that have beaten the Shrek box office since then? Because I I want to tell you for for best biggest opening weekend, for biggest opening weekend, because I want to tell you, and this is all domestically, of the top 20, Shrek is the only one. That's not Disney? No, no, no. That is released prior to 2010 i know what it is okay top one what do you think domestically it's, domestically it's toy story three no it is not it's toy story four it's not fuck it's considered no, an, no, 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 it's no. considered no this. this one's considered animated but in reality is it but it is fuck it's the lion king. it's the lion king fuck number one you. okay fuck i know that i know it's lion king what's Big- animated about it the ground the ground <laughs> biggest so biggest opening weekend what do you think for number two it's a sequel is it, is it Toy Story 3? No, it's not. No, it's Pixar, though. Incredibles 2. Incredibles 2. Perfect. Number 3 came out last year. Last year? Last year. It is not DreamWorks or Disney. Is it Spider-Verse? No, that's on here, but it's not It's not that one. It's got to be one of the... I want to say it's one of the minions. No. Right? Nope. Okay, give me one more guess. It has, I need a hero in it. Oh, it's Super Mario It's Brothers. Super Mario Brothers. Four is Finding Dory. Oh, yeah. Uh, five. This is domestic? Domestic, yeah. Okay. Five, Frozen 2. Uh, for Super Mario Bros., it is the number one opening weekend worldwide. Worldwide. Oh, wow. So for like, that's the top one worldwide, not even close. But Toy Story 3 isn't even, isn't till number 10. Oh, wow. A Toy Story 3 did really well, though. 110 million opening weekend. Spider-Verse is eight at 120 million. Toy Story 4, 120.9. So a little bit higher. It made a little bit more. So that that's pretty much it. Shrek 2 is now at 11. Still 108 million on its opening weekend. Mm. This actually got re-released and made over a million dollars its opening weekend <laughs> in re-release revenue. Well, I mean, you know, it, uh, with, with whatever money it already had made. With whatever money it had, but 1 million it made. So now it's over so now it's it's grossed over a billion yeah it's made it's made, well it's close it made one million dollars uh i think worldwide it's opening weekend so that says something about nostalgia go shrek 2 go shrek 2 i imagine cameron diaz mike myers eddie murphy 
just like on opening weekend, just opening the door and just a pile of money hitting them <laughs> in the face. There's a full wad, just bam. And I was like, there's so much money in this. It's that scene from Breaking Bad where uh, Luell and Bill Burr just lay on top of the money. <laughs> I got to do it, man. I got to do it, man. It's Shrek and Donkey just <laughs> laying on that. Fact number two. The potion which the fairy godmother gives to King Harold near the climax of the film is labeled Roman numeral nine, making it a bottle of, you guessed it, love potion number nine. A reference to the popular song by the Searchers. I want to guarantee that all of the listeners of this show will now have that song playing in their heads all day, as it's impossible to get out once it's going. Enjoy that. Love potion number nine. <laughs> it, it, it really does stick in your head for a while. When I looked up the fact and wrote it down, I was just like listening to it. And then it was like later in the night, I was like, love potion. I was like, God damn, dude. This. And I added that to the end. I was like, I didn't know how to end the joke until I had gone a few hours from writing the basic fact down. And then I was like, God damn, dude, I'm still singing it. Now we're on to the what a story mark. This again is the funniest or most outrageous fact I found about the movie and written down. Nick is going to read it for you and rate it from one to five marks. And in the vein of our hero, Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> what a story, Mark. In the police montage, while following Shrek and Donkey, a commentator refers to the suspect on a white Bronco, a direct reference to the OJ case as he attempted to flee in a 1994 Ford Bronco on June 17th, 1994. While in the film, Shrek is accused of stealing and lying to the princess, in real life, Simpson was accused of murdering his ex-wife. Do you think if he got caught, Shrek would write a book called If I Ogred Her? <laughs> he just died. What do you want from us? <laughs> <laughs> he died like a week ago, or OJ. OJ, uh, the, ju the juice is no longer loose. Everyone's making jokes, so here's ours. Yep, that is a direct reference to the OJ Simpson uh, police chase as happened on June 17th, 1994, where he was hiding in the back of the, I think his friend's Bronco. That's not even his Bronco, it was his friend's Bronco, as he was had his friend driving very slowly mm -hmm. to Mexico. <laughs> and tonight, on tonight on nights. Tonight on nights. Do you see how they're pepper spraying yeah. them with actual Dude, like, it's tankers. so, police brutality, police brutality. Oh. It's a big cops reference. It's, it's all police brutality <laughs> in, in there. It, like, it's absolutely police brutality. <laughs> getting pepper sprayed for no reason with pepper but it, like donkey being shoved to the ground and <laughs> screaming eddie murphy screaming police brutality means something it's that's not yeah that's not kids movie eddie murphy <laughs> anymore <laughs> that that's straight <laughs> snl eddie murphy <laughs> police brutality police brutality <laughs> and poor antonio banderas the latino gets fucking drugs planted on him <laughs> catnip that's uh not mine <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking funny but yeah, reference to the OJ case. I mean, definitely, again, this movie is just full of references, just references to shit. This movie is how I learned about OJ. Re my parents, because <laughs> really? my parents really? love that part. My parents love that part. And I was like, I don't get what's so funny. And they're like, oh, okay. And they sat me down and told me the whole story. Listen, <laughs> listen. You know that guy you like in the naked gun? Well, he killed somebody. <laughs> no, he allegedly. Well, we're on camera, so I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I, I believe he did that shit. Okay. <laughs> Now, listen. We need to watch the murder of there's, Nicole Brown. There's a, oh. <laughs> listen, there's a good chance he did, but because it wasn't convicted in federal court, I'm just not going to say anything. But he did write a book and make money off of it. Fucking narcissist. Which, it, which is horrible. If I ogred her. If I ogred her. If I ogred her. <laughs> is that tasteless? You let me know. Comment. <laughs> <laughs> what do you rate this fact out of one to five marks nick this is a 3.75 all right i'll take it i'll take it now there are other shrek movies shrek one shrek three i think there's shrek four now there's a shrek five coming out there's, i think they they announced it yeah oh god you know i'm gonna have to paint myself green and go to the the theater for that opening night hey now you're a rock star. <laughs> but I want to talk. You, I, I think all of the Shrek sequels are worth checking out. Maybe, you know, at least start with Shrek one and see what you think. Before we get before we get super into anything, you know, we I, I reckon we got to recommend the sequels is worth checking out. But I want to say this weird cult of personality around Shrek. Shrek cult. Oh, my God. Oh, God. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Listen, the movies are good, and that's why it started, right? Because all these memes started because something was worth watching and enjoying, and it was a common shared interest. I think it all started with that stupid YouTube video. 
I hate it. The Shrek is love. Shrek I hate is life. It. I hate it. Don't mention it. Yeah, okay. I fucking hate that video. But I, I, I don't know how this all started. But now there's now there's Shrek themed parties. There's oh, Shrek geez. raves. Shrek, Shrek weddings. Wedding. Shrek wedding. Shrek everything. Shrek has turned into this. People, people are huge. There's a lot of big, 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 big fans of Shrek out there. Like yeah. it has an enormous fan base. Like joke. Absolutely. Like memes aside. Like it's a beloved franchise. Oh no, I'm not saying that. It's just. But you are specifically talking about the internet it, craze the, of it. The internet meme and just everything behind Shrek has always has just grown where the fandom is now feeding off of that and the, the, the memes are feeding off the fandom and it's this continual cycle. <laughs> I remember for a, a time in like 2016, people would just enter a room going, somebody wants every me. time because that just that's just how it that's just what the meme was at the time. And I don't think it'll ever stop but if you were obviously a millennial growing up and you watch shrek and now it's there i remember having an honest discussion about a movie with someone at work it was about i think the later uh twin peaks when you know twin Pe david lynch came back and like finished twin peaks with fucking matthew lillard yeah yeah just weird shit <laughs> and that's we, <laughs> we were having this discussion somebody was like well have you not seen shrek and I was like, God damn it. Somebody's always going to talk about Shrek. But I don't know. It's just interesting that that is how much personality is developed around this. If you want to go into deep dive of that, you can. But we would just recommend checking out the movies. What do you think? <laughs> By all means, see the first and the second. I can't think of a person alive who hasn't seen the Shrek movies unless they're a baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just really quickly, some final thoughts on Shrek 2 specifically. I think it it does what a sequel should really do. Yeah. Uh, it continues the big story, but with a new plot and expands the world that they're in. And it introduces new characters that really have a point to being there. Minus maybe Puss in Boots, but yeah, know, he does have one of the best movies in the franchise now. So yes, I still think I still like the first one a little bit better, probably because the first one, I just like its simplicity a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, but two, for comedy's sake, I think excels. Always a worth a watch, you know, show it to your kids, show it to your friends, watch it whenever you want. You know, there's there's a reason there's such a, you know, fan base around it. These movies just make people happy. Absolutely with watching. So happy 20 years to Shrek 2. To Shrek 2. Should we rate this movie? What would you give it? Uh, you know what? It's a, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. 70. 70. Very nice. I'm going to give it an 84. 70 and 84. 70 plus 84 divided by 2 is a 77. 77 for Shrek 2. Very good. 77 for Shrek 2. Welcome to do like <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Wipe your shoes, shine your face. <laughs> I think that'll do it for us here at the One and a Half White Guys podcast. Thank you for listening and watching to this episode. Be sure to rate, follow, and subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast from. And don't forget to follow us on our Instagram at One and a Half White Guys podcast on TikTok at one and a half white guys and now on our YouTube which is hopefully where you're watching this at one and a half white guys and be sure to tell a friend to listen to the podcast where we say we're going to talk about a movie and we kind of talk about the movie what are, what are we watching tonight Shrek the third Shrek the third or oh, I thought we were going to watch nights tonight on night tonight on night <laughs> tonight on night <laughs> all right everyone we'll talk to you later go watch Shrek 2 again bye somebody <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>